Hello, everyone. My name is Daria, and I'm a student of LME Munich School of Management. During my studies, I collected various work experience, including consulting one. I personally believe that consulting field is very interesting, where you can learn a lot. But before I explain to you what you can learn from consulting and what specifics does this field have, let me address the question who the consultant is and what job does she do. Well, consultant, um, basically a person from any background who works mainly with clients. And clients, in this case, can be any entity. It can be corporate, which means companies of any size. It can be government or non-for-profit organizations. But in all these cases, the main goal that consultant has is basically to find a solution to the complex client's problem and to persuade the client that this solution is the best one. Sounds pretty easy and obvious, right? However, when we add here the setting in which consultants have to work, it doesn't seem easy anymore. First of all, consultants work under really strict time constraints. So imagine when the company goes bankrupt, they don't have many months of time for you to save their, <laughs> to save their problem. That's why consultants have to be really efficient. Secondly, uh, the problem under which consultant works are usually novel. What does it mean? Imagine that a company wants to go um, into different market, Asia or the US, and they have no idea how to enter this market. That's why a consultant team will be the first one who will address this problem and find a solution. But not only does they have to find a solution, they bear the responsibility for their um, decision. Like in the case uh, in the project of the um, cost cutting. When uh, the company has to fire lots of people, it is the consultant who has to find the methods how to save these uh, workspaces. That's why imagine the situation from the daily life of a consultant. You're standing in front of the clients with a team where people have a many year experience in the field. And you feel like this dog from the meme staying pretty calm, but being in the house this, uh, this which is on the fire saying, well, this is fine, we will solve this, no worries. But inside, you feel that um, it is pretty difficult. You work under really time constraints and under really tough pressure of the environment. So at least we can learn something from these people and to know what tactics they use when they solve such complex problems. And that's exactly what I want to tell you today and want to compare it to the daily approach. How would uh, some mm, random person or like say a client try to solve the problem and how it is compared to the consulting approach. First of all, when we say about uh, problem solving, uh, let's imagine the client. So the client uh, would probably start with the known facts that um, he has in his hand. Had. He worked at the company many years, and um, of course he knows how it functions pretty good. Then he bases the analysis already on the known facts about the company, and apparently jumped to conclusion of um, what is happening and what can be the potential problem. Such approach has, however, some um, disadvantages, and I will illustrate it um, on the example of a friend. Imagine you have a friend, Max, we all may have a friend, Max, who has no idea what to do with his life. And in this case, Max uh, decided to make a master degree, but he's not sure whether it's a good idea. So he collected some random facts that master of degree is pretty prestigious. He knows already pretty good universities like TU Munich or LMU, and also all of his friends already did master, so why not me? And he did some analysis further, read the forums, and also talk to friends, go to the university events, and think that he is pretty well um, informed, jump to the conclusion that, yes, I should do the master now. However, such approach has um, several disadvantages. Well, first of all, uh, you may have some missing information. You can't take just random facts or the known facts 
even though they can be right, and put it as um, the um, solution and as the argumentation for your solution. Secondly, there is no structure or links in this case, which means you may have some reasoning problems when you go um, by such methods. That's why consulting developed a different or used a different approach, which usually help to avoid such um, issues. It is called the top-down approach. They basically go right from the top, starting from the problem statement. It's on the top of the pyramid, let's say. So this is the problem statement. This is the problem that the client has. And afterwards, consultant pays the hypothesis this probably potential solution that can help to tackle the issue. Important here that the consultant don't start the analysis immediately. They do the structure first. They put exactly um, um, main elements that you, can, you should go through, and only after that you start the analysis itself. Let's put um, it again in the environment of Max, how the consultant would then uh, go into the problem solving approach. First of all, we have the problem statement, should Max do a master degree? Secondly, we hypothesize that master degree, it is useful. And why it is useful, what aspects we should consider here? It is the knowledge, so we know Max pretty well. It is important for him to develop some new skills when doing a master's degree. Secondly, it is a social. You can meet new people and make the friends. And finally, it is the financial, so that he will earn more after he has a further um, degree. And after we set such fixed structure, we go into the analysis again. Just asking friends, reading poems, and so on why this approach works uh, pretty good in consulting and why it is preferable. First of all, it is fast. Because you have the main structure, you know what to do. Secondly, you have a big picture or external global picture. You have no missing elements. You, you know exactly how to go and where to start. And this, of course, uh, is possible because of the clear structure. So all the main elements are already in the structure of your analysis. Did you notice how, much I, how many times I said structure? Because the structure here is the main element that um, helps consultant to work. And the structure is also not random. It is done by the specific principle. In consulting, it's called MISI. MISI is basically the abbreviation. It stands for mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. Let's look at these two blocks separately. What does it mean to be mutually exclusive? It means that you have two ideas or two categories that never collide. So they cover completely different fields. In the example of Max, um, not exclusive version would be if we analyze such things as making friends and meeting new people as a different ideas. However, they are not. You see that they are about the social aspect. That's why the right idea would be if we take financial and social ideas, they are completely different, which means it is exclusive. The second part calls um, exhaustive. And it means that in your structure, you have all main categories that are important to prove your hypothesis. There are no other missing categories that can help you to answer the main question. In the example of Max, uh, the missing element will be here, uh, the skills. So it, it is important for Max to analyze um, whether he will develop new skills. And if such element is not in the structure, it will be not exhaustive. Why MISI, however, works, works also pretty good in consulting, and why they always refer to this principle. First of all, it helps to break down a complex problem into simple blocks. You have a pretty nice categories, you know exactly where to go, and these categories never overlap. Secondly, it is a structure. You know the consequences of categories you have to analyze. And finally, most important thing, you have the full information. So due to the principle of exhaustive, 
you know that you have exactly all categories that help you to answer the main question. However, um, doing the problem solving process is just one side of the coin. After you did it, as the, yes, you know, the aim of consulting, you need to present it. And nowadays, we have ever faced um, quite many problems when people presenting. Like, people may digress, or people may miss some important ideas that they're trying to communicate during their talks. Or they give the solution at the end, which is not that persuasive. Imagine how it would be when Max comes to us and trying to explain what he did and what um, is uh, his problem. He will probably start with the situation saying that, well, I don't have any money now, I don't have many friends, I'm not satisfied with my life. Then he will go to the analysis, what I already did. I looked from the forums, I meet some people, I talk to them, try to visit the events. However, I jump to the conclusion that I need to earn more, I need to meet people, I need to try to improve my life and to collect some new knowledge. That's why I'm thinking that the idea of doing the master is not bad. You may probably heard some same stories from your friends. And the problem with such approach is that you have the solution only at the end. And you don't see the whole argumentation, how you came to that. You may lose even train of thought when you go the same way. That's why consulting also have the solution for the communication. Let's see now how it would be um, when consulting trying to present the results that they find out. So the principle called Minto, it is the um, pyramid, and it was named after um, Barbara Minto, who invented such principle. So the difference is, is that you start with a solution. You give the client exactly what they want to hear first, and it is the answer. What is the answer to my problem? And that's what you give with the Minto pyramid. After you gave the solution, you may start with the supporting arguments. So why exactly this problem, or why exactly this solution works? Here are the arguments. And you go here, or you go further, only if the customer, uh, only if the client wants, and if he has time, you can also give some, some supporting arguments. So important here is that you start with the solution and then go into the supporting arguments, and only after that you go to some um, additional data insights. Why then Minto? Why such principle in consulting? Um, you know, when we have um, here, the friend who is pretty desperate about the situation, he wants to know the answer. That's why you give this answer to Max. Max, you should do master degree. Why, he may ask. Here are your three arguments. First of all, you will earn more money. Secondly, you will meet new friends. And thirdly, you will develop uh, further skills. And as a result, Max, the master degree will be beneficial for you and you will be satisfied with your life. That's why, once again, you have the clear answer when you go and buy the mental pyramid. Secondly, you have the clear argumentation why the solution works. And of course, it will be fast delivery. Because when you go by Minto, it is the clear message what you're trying to say to your listeners. That's why all in all, what I wanted to uh, tell you today with such consulting approach is that it has a really powerful problem-solving tools as well as the communication tools. It is always fixed. You go always top-down and prioritize the structure in the top-down approach. You always use the MISI principle, so you don't have any missing information uh, within your um, analysis. And when you present the results, you always go by Minto pyramid, starting from the solution on the top. So the consulting, um, such approach works pretty well in consulting in the setting that we discussed at the beginning, but it also inspires using such methods in the daily life or in any fields that you may consider. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. 
just have one very important question. How many people in the audience name is Max? <laughs> Raise your hands. No one. Um, well, that leaves out the opportunity for a couple of nice questions about their further education. Nevertheless, now we'll have five minutes for any questions to Dasha, so feel free to ask what's on your, on your mind. Over there. Hey, thank you very much. Actually, really nice presentation. I really enjoyed it. Uh, one question I have, uh, when do you stop uh, with your arguments being exhaustive? So how do you know that you covered all these, uh, these facts? Do you stop at 5, at 10, or, or what's, what, what's the way to go here? Mm -hmm. So the research showed that um, we have usually three, four main arguments because if you go f further, it may be still um, distressing or you, of course, you can go into details, but usually three blocks, it is exactly what suits here. You can always um, go through the, let's say, always think about the uh, global picture. It helps you to divide. For example, if you say financial and non-financial, it will be missing in this example, and um, such blocks is, however, um, uh, still possible uh, to build, maybe some abstracting from the details. Thank you. Any other brave, curious people? I see one question over there. And thanks for your presentation. I only have a very small question that can this kind of consulting approach go beyond the limitation of human backgrounds. Like sometimes you have some cultural backgrounds or uh, education backgrounds and it would limit your uh, analysis. Can this kind of method go beyond this kind of limit? If I may shortly uh, repeat and rephrase the question, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it was whether the consulting approach can serve any cultural or human background or is it specific only to certain uh, cultural approaches? That was your question, right? I hope. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm trying. I'll try to explain also generally. So uh, the thing is, it was of course um, developed for the corporate field. So that is still like the problem. Um, more or less uh, has some financial reasons, or if we work for an NGO, or some strategic version. But if you have problem uh, with the culture uh, within the company, it is still can be applied. Um, consulting approach still can be applied. So when consultant is hired, it is not only about um, saying the problem of the revenue. It is, can also be the culture, which is the um, core that the company needs. And of course, consulting approach can also be applied in this case. I suspect if your question has been deeper than that, use the opportunity in the break to <laughs> develop it further. We will have time for one more question on the consulting approach. I see one raised hand over there. The brave car on the bench. Yeah, thank you very much for your presentation. Actually, I feel like I'm Max here in this audience. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so, um, when you present your solution and your ideas to the client, uh, what is the next step? Yeah. So, um, usually, when you um, in the ideal in the ideal consulting um, project. You have um, several steps. When you first develop the strategy, when the company um, don't, don't know what to do, so you develop the strategy, the new strategy, how they should now operate, and afterwards you have the implementation phase. So if the client wants, uh, they hire the consulting for the whole transformation process, and the implementation part um, is also done by consultant. It is a little different, so in consulting you have um, strategy consultant and also operations consultant, uh, who also mainly focus on this implementation part. So it's not that consultant simply um, leave the clients low. No, they go uh, till the end. Uh, they also implement their solution and as a result they measure um, the uh, the results and also can some modify some KPIs, so some changes, do some changes. Yeah. Thank you. So <laughs> let's give her a warm welcome.